Hi there. Now in the last video, we have learned about Python dictionary methods. Here we will look at dictionary operations and built-in Python functions that can be used with dictionaries. The first operator that we are going to look at is in operator. We know from the list section that this operator determines whether an element exists in a collection or not. Here in dictionaries, in operator tells you whether something appears as a key in the dictionary or not. If that key is exists in the dictionary, it returns true, otherwise it returns false. For example, in the example of dictionary from English to Spanish, we can check this. So let's check it. If I write something like this, one in my dictionary, and save and run our code, I need to print out this value over here because otherwise we will not see the output and run our code you see that it returns true because one key is exist in our dictionary if i write two three or four it will return true but in the case of values for example if i write uno here from spanish you see that it returns false so in operator only checks the keys but if you want to use in operator for values you remember we uh, we covered in the last lecture that we have values function which returns only values so we can use here values and run our code you see that in this case it returns true so to check values we need to call values function that we covered in the last lecture the in operator uses different algorithm for lists and dictionaries for lists it uses a linear search algorithm as the list gets longer, the search time gets longer in direction proportion to the length of list. For dictionaries, Python uses an algorithm called hash table that has a remarkable property. The in operator takes about the same amount of time no matter how many items there are in the dictionary. The time complexity for in operator in the dictionary is O1 because by taking a key, it calculates the index using a hash function and checks it in an associative array and based on this, it returns true or false, which means that using in operator for checking any value in the dictionary is very efficient. And the time complexity for this operation is O1. Now the next statement that we are going to look in this lecture is for keyword. We have talked about this in the lecture of the traversing dictionary. So it's used for looping through any given collection and it works for dictionary as well. Here, by using the for statement, we can visit each key of dictionary. So let's see how this is working. If I just delete this and write here for key in my dictionary, print key. Let's run our code. And before running, let me clear this. You see that it visits each pair and print out the keys only. If you want to access value, you can just write here my dictionary name and inside brackets put the key. In this case, it will return the values. If you want to return both of them, you can put key here and with the comma, you can put value and run our code. You see that in this case, it returns pairs. So the first pair is this one and the second pair is this one and third pair is this one. So you might be interested what is the time complexity for for operation in the dictionaries. It's O n time complexity because in this case it has to visit all elements of the dictionary one by one. So this takes O n time complexity. Okay, now let's continue Python built-in functions that work with dictionaries. The first method here we are going to look at is all method. The all method returns true when all elements in the given iterable are true. If not, it returns false. The syntax of all method is like this. It takes any collection as parameter. In this case, it will be dictionary and return true or false. It returns true if all elements in an iterable are true. It returns false if all elements in the collection is false. So we have cases over here. Based on the case, the return value is changing. So if all values are true, it returns true. If all values are false, it returns false. If one value is true, it returns false. If one value is false, it returns again false. You can see it from this table. 
and if this is empty it will turn true so let's see all these cases one by one how this is working in practice so the first case will be all values are true let me just delete this dictionary over here i will create new one in which we need to change the values true or false so first case will be true and true if i use all function now you will see that it returns true so i need to print out this all and as i said all takes one parameter which will be the collection in our case it's dictionary so if i run our code you see that it returns true even if i change these true values to the text they are still true because we have some values over here it will return true you see that the values still here are true so this was the first case in which all values are true okay now let's look at the second case in which all values are false so let's change our dictionary to all values all false so i'll change values as well and the keys here i will put false here also i will put false now if i run our code now you see that the result is false so this is the second case in which all values are false so let's continue to the third case in third case one value is true others are false so here if i put true and this value false and let's create another pair over here two is false now if i run our code you see that in this case it returns false also you see that it returns false now the fourth case is one value is false the other is true in this case also it returns false and the fifth case is if we run it for empty dictionary it will return true so i'll just create here new dictionary as an empty dictionary and run it for this dictionary save it and run it you see that in this case it returned true so here we have learned that all method checks the elements in the given collection so based on the values of element it returns true or false so let's continue to the next function the next function is any function any method returns true if any element of collection is true if not any method will return false so the syntax of any method is like this any method takes one parameter the parameter might be list string or dictionary which is a collection and it returns true if at least one element of collection is true and it returns false if all elements are false or empty so the difference between the any and all method is that in the case of any method if you run it for empty collection it returns false but in case of all method if you run it for empty collection it returns true and if one value in the collection is false in the case of all method it returns false but if one value in the collection is true in case of any method it returns true so let's see how this is working one more time if i run it for for example for this operation here you see that one value is true so it should return true in this case let's run it for this dictionary let's run our code you see that it returns to if one value in the dictionary is true the value will be true but if you run it for empty in the case of all method it returns true but in case of any method it returns false so that's how any method works now let's continue to the next method the next method is len method the len function returns the number of items in the collection the syntax of len method is like this so it takes a sequence or a collection as a parameter in this case it will take dictionary in case of dictionary len method returns the number of pairs not the number of all elements over here it returns number of pairs for example if you run it for this dictionary you will see that it returns three so let's run it because here in this dictionary we have only three pairs so len my dictionary let's close it let's run our code you see that we have only three pairs over here so let's continue to the next method now the next method is sorted method sorted function returns a sorted list from the items in an iterable the sorted function sorts the elements of given collection in a specific order 
The syntax of sorted function is like this. Sorted function take a maximum of three parameters. The first parameter is iterable. It might be any collection, list, tuple, string, or dictionary. In our case, it will be dictionary. Then the second parameter is reverse parameter. This is Boolean parameter. If true, the sorted list is reversed, but otherwise by default it's false. Then the third parameter is key parameter. This is a function that serves as a key for the sorted comparison. By default, it's not. So let's see how this is working. Let's imagine that we have a dictionary like this. So if we want to sort this, we can call our sorted function. Let me delete this from here. Here I put sorted. And inside this one, I'll put our dictionary. Let's run our code. So you see that it sorts the keys of this dictionary. If I put here reverse parameter, as true, you see that the output will be different. So if I run our code, you see that in this case, it ordered the keys of dictionary, then reversed it. So this is the reverse version of the list over here. So let's see how key parameter works in sorted function. If you want your own implementation for sorting, the key parameter is very useful. Based on the results of the key function, you can sort given iterable. If I change, for example, these values over here, something different let me just put different alphabets here here let's put five character so let me delete this here if i put as a key parameter for example len it will order these elements based off their length so let's save and run our code we see that the first one is length of two then the three three then four then five it ordered them based on their length here to make things clear let me put the first parameter for example the length of five or six then rerun our code you see that this value comes to the at the end so which means that by using key parameter we can put any function that we want here to order our dictionary so with this function we conclude our boot in python functions for dictionary so hopefully everything is clear you have understand everything that i have explained here now in the next lecture let's see what is the difference between dictionaries and lists